A memorial to Cradley's Steve Bloomer, the first football superstar, stands in Bridge Street, opposite the row of houses where he was born on 20th of January, 1874. Steve was to become the most famous football player of his age, scoring 28 goals in 23 games for England, a record that stood for almost 50 years. Steve was the eldest child of Murab Dunn and Caleb Bloomer. His father was a puddler at the ironworks and later a skilled anchorsmith. The family grew quickly and in 1879, with five mouths to feed, Caleb decided it was time to improve the family's lot. They left Cradley, travelling by train to the large industrial town of Derby. So, Steve Bloomer left his birthplace at the age of five, but he was to return many times over the coming years. The surname Bloomer is centuries old and comes from work in the refining of iron ingots or blooms. In Derby, the association with the trade continued with Caleb using his old puddling skills at Lay's Foundry, close to home in the Lit Church area. It was at school in St James's Road that Steve began playing six-a-side football. Mr Sermon, who helped out with the team, remembered the small and skinny Steve as being so nippy that he could leave all the other lads of his own age standing. At 11, he attended a match between two league teams and was so thrilled and excited that he made up his mind to become a first-class player and represent his country. Steve still had far to go before achieving his ambition, but the formation of Derby County Football Club in 1884 and introduction of paid professional players in 1885 meant that Steve was in the right place at the right time. On reaching 12, Steve left school and began to learn the skills of a smith, finally joining Caleb by the forge. Playing professional football, however, continued to be his ambition, and he wrote, From those early days, I was literally boiling over with enthusiasm for football. A naturally quiet boy, his passion for the game transformed him when he played or spoke about it. He became a popular team member and eventually captain of Derby Swifts. Steve scored the winning goal in the under-15 Shield final of 1890 and soon became a minor celebrity in his age group because of his high goal-scoring feats. At 17, he was described in the press as the best young prospect we have ever seen. Derby County offered Steve professional terms and aged 18, he became a professional footballer. When the time came, Bloomer had a dream football league debut overcoming his nerves to score two goals in an away win. That season, he had 11 goals from 28 matches and his wage was raised to £1 a week. Performing cartwheels was his way of celebrating goals at that time. In 1894, Bloomer topped his club's league scoring chart, having 19 goals from just 25 games. He was to continue to be their top goal scorer for the next 13 consecutive seasons. Making his England debut in 1895 at Derby's baseball ground, Steve scored two goals in a 9-0 win over Ireland in front of a crowd of 10,000, which included for the first time his father. Just a few months later, Steve's brother Philip, also a professional Derby player, died suddenly of peritonitis. In August, Steve married local girl Sarah Walker, whose father supplied the club's boots. Over the coming years, Bloomer's international record was to be superb, scoring in his first ten matches for England, and even now still being in the top ten all-time goal scorers for his country. Steve was of medium height and slim build, with a very pale complexion. Playing at inside right, he was called the destroying angel. Two-footed, with superb balance, he had devastating shooting power from all angles and distances. He had a great career, never letting success change him. One of the matches that Steve would have wanted to forget was when he captained England against Scotland at Ibrox in April 1902. During the game, the huge stand collapsed because of faulty timber, killing 26 people and injuring hundreds. Officials decided that to avoid the crowd realising the scale of the disaster and panic spreading, 
the game would go on after the injured were moved from the debris. Steve had to lead his players past the long rows of dead and dying to get back onto the pitch after this first Ibrox disaster. Steve Bloomer was one of the first working-class heroes and was, of course, well-known back in Cradley, often visiting by train. In May 1904, he played cricket for Collegate but was run out for five. The following Thursday, he presided over a supper entertainment at the Fish Inn on the High Street. The licensee was his old friend, Hezekiah Walker. Steve often visited friends and relatives in Cradley during his prosperous years. When he retired in 1914, age 40, he played 655 league, test and FA Cup games, scoring 394 goals. He had enjoyed 22 seasons in top-class football at Derby and Middlesbrough. After retiring, Steve was offered the job of coach to Berlin Britannia 92 FC. Leaving his wife and three daughters in Derby, he travelled to Germany, arriving in August 1914. Three weeks later, Britain declared war on Germany. As an Englishman, Steve became an enemy alien and soon after a prisoner of war at Ruleben civilian detention camp. Ruleben was a race course and accommodation was the cold and dirty stables, six men or more crammed into an 11 foot by 11 foot horse box. Incredibly, 356 internees were housed in stables designed for 27 horses. The food and conditions in which the men lived were bad, but they were determined their spirits wouldn't be broken and soon began organising themselves. Footballers, who had also all been caught out by the declaration of war, lobbied for use of the race course for matches. In 1915, permission was given and soon cricket, tennis, golf and rugby were being reported on in the camp magazine that the men produced. Steve was a popular figure in Rulabin and initially coped well with his four years as a prisoner. But the death of his 17-year-old daughter Violet from kidney disease in 1917 was a cruel blow. Anxious to return home, in March of the following year, Steve was told that because of his age, he would be released to neutral Holland, where he would remain until the end of the war. There was naturally a farewell football match and a rousing send-off. Steve wrote that outside the camp, mothers with children were begging for food, but that despite their treatment at the hands of the Germans, the men who were released were as generous as they could be with what food they had. Their train was greeted by thousands of cheering people when it arrived in Holland, much to Steve's surprise. An Amsterdam club offered him a job as coach, and he was in great demand to play in exhibition matches. By late November, the war was over, and Steve was told he was free to return home. Steve later said about his time as a prisoner in Germany, the reason so many of us remained alive is food from home and sports. During his football career, Steve lived comfortably with Sarah and their daughters, but never made the kind of money players do nowadays. It was his love of the game that fueled his success. Popular, patriotic and modest, Steve was dignified on and off the sports field. He enjoyed a second successful career as coach, manager and journalist in later years, producing fine articles on footballing skills and travelling all over the world. When Steve died suddenly in 1938, aged 64, his funeral took place in Derby Cathedral, the biggest funeral ever in the town. A memorial was erected in the centre of Derby, and in more recent years, a plaque displayed and bust of the destroying angel unveiled at the Rams Pride Park ground. 